I don't mind if it's one o'clock in the morning, we will play the game until we've finished. Is anybody else ruthlessly competitive when it comes to family board games? I am, my four-year-old son is, and this Christmas, I discovered that my mother-in-law is too. Everybody else had gone to bed. Christmas was all but over, but we were playing Monopoly to the death. The last two remaining tycoons. I must admit, I reluctantly conceded after landing on Piccadilly with a hotel for the third time in a row. This desire to win is great in so many of us, isn't it? I'm a, I'm a deeply competitive person. That's why I love the family board game. And yet so many of the activities and the things that we participate in has so few winners. And so there's a tension between wanting people to be involved and to participate and achievement and winning and excellence. And some have sought to resolve that tension by making it the taking part that counts. Or by celebrating being average. Or worse still, by removing competition altogether. And I, I struggle with all of these because I, I love competition. I understand the desire to resolve this tension because on the one hand, if we aim low, we hit low. And yet on the other hand, what if our obsession with winning and achievement and attainment is actually robbing us of something even more valuable. I've been studying organizational culture now for about 10 years. It started when I got involved as a volunteer in a local church. It's a voluntary organization. But I began to look and study charities, NGOs, businesses, all manner of organizations. I looked at culture because we were trying to create a culture in our organization, in our community. I looked at books like Jim Collins' Good to Great, and I observed and I saw what he was trying to say. I saw there were things that made some good and others great. And it challenged me deeply. And I, I, I began to notice that the way that some people saw excellence and achievement changed the way they interacted with people, their staff, their volunteers, their students, other organizations. And actually, I believe that this attitude towards excellence so often holds us back from the creating the culture that we're trying to create. And actually, this misunderstanding of excellence starts at a very young age. Let me tell you a story about 12-year-old Owen. I'm sitting in the English literature classroom as Miss Cartwright walks around handing out the blue exercise books. Thud. It lands in front of me and I quickly flick through the pages to the most recent page and there, in red pen, neat handwriting, is the word excellent. I smile proudly, well smugly actually, because in reality, my work is anything but excellent. Let me explain. I didn't cheat. Have you seen the internet in 1995? <laughs> and there's no one in my household who would have let me cheat. And yet, her analysis of my work couldn't have been further from the truth. Maybe comparatively, it was excellent. Maybe I'd achieved a certain level. But what mark would Miss Cartwright have given me if she'd seen my work in progress? Last minute, definitely. Lazy? probably, slapdash, bare minimum, complacent, all these are highly likely probabilities. You see, I had a misunderstanding about what excellence truly was. And I learned it from this young age. I had confused excellence with results. I had made that mistake myself, but I see it repeated time and again in businesses, charities, schools, organizations. I remember years later, I was working in a, uh, in, in a sales environment. I was serving a company and working in that environment, and what was happening was they were selling a, an advertising product. And I began to understand how this product worked, and there was one particular salesman, Gary, who was very adept at getting sales. He was ringing the bell, as it were. He was doing so well. And so I thought, I'm going to listen in and see what it is that Gary does so well. I listened in. 
And what I heard as Gary was on the phone was lie after lie after lie that resulted in sale after sale after sale. And these kind of inappropriate practices, questionable practices, may not be what we would associate with our organizations, but I want to challenge you with this thought today. What if some of our systems and our structures and our procedures are set up to deliver us results, not to deliver us excellence? For example, a company that rewards people purely on the attainment of goals is missing something. It's going to reward high performers that may be low in loyalty, low in dedication, lazy even. Do we really want to reward that? In a culture of excellence, is that what we would choose to reward? In the third sector, it's certainly something that we didn't want to do. Not only because it then becomes expensive constantly having to hire in these high performers from outside, but secondly, because we wanted to do something different. Just like so many of you want to do in schools, we wanted to develop people. We wanted to develop a culture of excellence where people chose to be excellent rather than just to take shortcuts. And you see, we were designing this culture. Let me say this about culture. Culture always happens in any organization, but it happens either by design or by default. If we don't design the culture that we want, we will get a default culture. In this context, if we don't design a culture of excellence, we will get a culture of results. This misunderstanding of excellence is holding us back from creating a culture of excellence. You see, so often we see excellence like this, as a, as a top level in a scale, whose alternatives are very good, good, average, poor, and what were you thinking? <laughs> but excellence is not a mark, it's not a target, it's not a point up here, Excellence is a philosophy, it's an attitude, it's an approach, it's a way of being, it's an ethos, it's a way of getting things done. See, we can arrive at excellence as a target purely by accident, as 12-year-old Owen did. Or we can arrive by it through other methods, like Gary did. But excellence as a pursuit is different. But when we begin to see excellence as a journey, not the destination... It changes the way that we see people, and it changes the way that we see results. When we pursue excellence as a journey and not a destination, it means we can still be excellent even when we fail. We're not afraid of failure. Because we understand it's not the goal, but our willingness to continue to fail in pursuit of any goal, that's what our excellence is. You see, a culture of results doesn't always produce excellence. But a culture of excellence always produces results in the long term. I believe that we need to be creating cultures of excellence. So how do we do this? Well, there's an expert on organizational culture, and so I turn to him. He's a chap called Edgar Schein, and he lists the primary and secondary and many other mechanisms for creating culture. And he says that the most potent thing, more so than vision documents, more so than things we put on the wall or the words that are everywhere, the most potent thing that creates culture is what leaders give attention to, measure, and control. And this encourages us to think about these things. We need to think differently. Are we measuring and controlling for excellence or just for results? How do we feel when we fail or when others fail? Do we ever celebrate failure, for example? What are we paying attention to is also key. Because actually... This idea of paying attention is good for all culture creation, but when it comes to a culture of excellence, it's doubly important. Because there's something about at our attention which gives us a clue to maybe how we measure excellence. What do I mean? 
We live in a world of partial attention. The war for our attention is constant. We are constantly doing multiple things at once. But excellence, I want to suggest, is an attitude which is wholehearted, focused, and dedicated. What are we paying attention to? This is what excellence looks like. In other words, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Thank you.